let's look at how to install Ubuntu 24.04 desktop as a VirtualBox 7.0 virtual machine. In order to install it in VirtualBox, first you need VirtualBox. If you don't have it, you can go to virtualbox.org and download the VirtualBox 7.0 and then install it. You might need to do some kinds of tricks with the BIOS and some of that if your system isn't set up to actually run virtual machines. Um, you can do a Google search if you're having trouble, but go ahead and make sure that's working first. Just download it. Um, next, um, you can download your, vir your Ubuntu desktop. Uh, if you are on the Ubuntu.com website, you can click on products and then there's the Ubuntu desktop, which is right here. You can click on the download Ubuntu desktop and then click on the download 24.04 LTS button right here to download it and it'll start the download automatically. Once you have VirtualBox installed, you can go ahead and click on machine and new and create a new virtual machine. So I'm going to go ahead and call this one client.example.com. And this is going to be a Linux type. And um, I'm going to scroll down the bottom and select other Linux 20 or 64 bit. And that's what I need in order to get the basic setup. You're still going to need to make some more changes to make it work properly, but that'll get you there. Now, the base memory, I would recommend to have 4 gigs, which is 4,096 megs. And I would do two CPUs. If you do one CPU, there is, I've had run into multiple problems with VirtualBox and the ISO images where it doesn't boot properly and it has some kind of a kernel panic. Um, we'll just go ahead and do two CPUs. It isn't that hard with these multi-core machines people typically have now. And as far as disk size, I would go with a good 30 gigs. It doesn't use all of it or allocate all of it automatically. It just fills up as it needs it. But this will give you an idea. All right, so go ahead and finish. At this point, you could go ahead and change some other settings or you could go to the tools and we're gonna make another change. So we're going to go down to network and we're going to click on NAT networks and we're going to create a NAT network. The NAT network allows us to have a special network where you can have multiple virtual machines talking to each other. If you don't have this set up, then the default behavior is to be a NAT where it is only that virtual machine talking out through its gateway, which is your host machine. So this allows you to have multiple machines in the same network. All right, going back to the client here, I'm going to click on settings and um, you can look at general, which we already did, system, or I saw that. Now we're going to our display. I would recommend doing a minimum of 64 megs of virtual or visual video memory. Uh, you could change monitors, but that would be kind of messy. So just stick with one monitor and keep your graphics controller the same. If you select a different graphics controller, it'll have some kind of an invalid settings detected thing below. So just stick with the uh, default VMS VGA. Uh, under storage, you're going to want to put the DVD you download, the ISO image of the DVD, into the drive. So that ISO image is your disk image. And you click on your empty DVD drive under this ID controller. You go to your optical drives, you click on this button right here on the right hand side, and you want to choose a disk file. At that point, you want to select the file you downloaded and you'll navigate to it and find it right here. I have it already selected in the past, so I can click Ubuntu 2404 desktop right there. Either way, it gets it, so now it says which image you're going to be booting from, and that will be booting from the DVD. Now, in order to boot it from it, you do need to have your live DVD or CD DVD option checked. So check that, and then you are ready to boot here. Now, under network, you're going to want to change the attached interface or adapter. So you got adapters one, two, three, and four, of which two, three, and four are all off. And then you want to do the drop down and select your NAT network and select the NAT network that you created, which is already selected by default. And at this point, you are ready to boot up. So I click OK. 
and I click start and it'll start the virtual machine. So when the virtual machine starts up, it starts basically this computer and the computer is booting your ISO image or booting that DVD image. And then it boots up into this grub bootloader. So you can click here and you can click arrows to select different things. If you wait too long, it'll automatically go into the try or install Ubuntu. Now I've had trouble with the graphics for the regular try or install Ubuntu. So I'm going to select the Ubuntu safe graphics. Now this one's usually a little easier to work with and it boots better and you can usually have less problems. But, you know, different people have different issues and so you can try different things and figure out what works for you. Now, at this point, it's going to try to um, have your mouse integration, lock your mouse in. You can see my mouse is having trouble sometimes. Um, I click on this. If you click on it, your mouse will be stuck in the screen. You can press the right control key in order to release your mouse. And so then you can go back um, and select other things. But for now, I am going in here and I'm allowing it to boot up onto the ISO image and allow me to go through the installation process for installing Ubuntu 2404 desktop. All right. Um, you're going to see this black screen. Um, normally when you have graphics issues and it fails, you'll have a black screen, but it'll just stay black. It won't change. It'll just stay this black screen and you start thinking, well, when is it going to change? And it just never does. Um, but if it's working correctly, it will do this where you can see the color change and uh, you hear some music sound. And when you hear that sound, uh, assuming you have sound connected up, if you don't see graphics, then that's a problem. So you want to make sure you have your language English selected. Click next. Um, you can do something with accessibility settings if you want. I just click next. I click next for the keyboard. And I just say it's a wired connection. You can then update your installer if you want, or you can skip that. I would recommend skipping it. Uh, and then do your install Ubuntu as opposed to trying it. Trying it just boots up to an environment where you can do some things and see how it works. But then you have to remember that you're running off of a ISO image, which is not the same thing as running off an actual installed system. So just click or leave it on the install Ubuntu. Click next. Um, you want an interactive installation as opposed to automated. So you can choose some things. Uh, I would recommend just the default selection for apps and then you can decide do you want to install third-party things so if you are installing on an actual computer you might want to have extra hardware you might want to have graphic support nvidia drivers and things like that but i don't need that uh, if you're planning on using it for more of a, a personal entertainment system you might want to be able to have mp3s mp4s movs the reason these things are not included here is because they aren't typically a uh, completely clean open source software so they're a little bit more restricted and so if you wanted to have these less open software formats things that might be protected by patents in other countries or things like that but are okay here you can check that and then download it and and it should have more entertainment stuff work for you we don't need that necessarily so we're going to go ahead and click next and then you can decide, do you want to do a manual installation? A manual installation allows you to select which drives you're going to have, which partitions, all that stuff. Um, this one right here, the default is erase disk and install Ubuntu. That just does it all for you. Um, you're going to need to create an account. So go ahead and type in your name. Um, you decide what your computer's name is. Mine is going to be client.example.com. Uh, my username Joseph right here. I'm going to go ahead and pick an insecure password because that's always nice. Um, and then I'll type another insecure password here that matches. Uh, and then you want to make sure that it just checks that you require your password for login and click next. You can select your time zone if you aren't in the Los Angeles, California, United States time zone. You can select a different time zone. Um, I'm just going to leave it that way. And then you can see the general set of what it's going to do. So it's going to reinstall or install completely erasing the hard drive. 
It's not going to put any security or encryption on the disk drive, and it's going to be creating an SDA1 and SDA2 formatted drive. So SDA1 is um, SD is for your your disk. A is disk A. So A, B, C as you have different hard drives in there, and then one is going to be the first partition on that, and then two is going to be the second partition on that disk. The second partition is formatted is exe4, which is the file system being used, and it's on the slash, which means just the the base of the file system. Not that you need to know that, but it's good to know these things um, going into it. All right, now it was going to start this installation process where it has to copy a bunch of files from the ISO image onto your virtual hard drive and start doing the installation. It's doing a whole lot of stuff in the background and these nice little moving dot line things are, are nice to let you know that something's happening, but you don't know what's happening unless you click on this little button right here, which drops it into something where you can see individual steps of what's happening. It's saying, well, I'm installing some stuff and I'm you know, doing different stages and you're gonna see it walk through each of these steps. And this takes a long time to scroll through and do all of this, but eventually it does get done and it builds the system. So we're going to go ahead and um, switch back to here and I will catch you in a couple of seconds, which is really going to be quite a few minutes after it's done doing the installation. Now that Ubuntu is completely installed, you're prompted with this restart now option. So we'll go ahead and click the restart now. And at that point, it's going to, or at this point, it's going to try to shut down all the devices, all the mounted partitions, and it's going to want to reboot the machine. It does tell me to remove the installation medium, then press enter. So I can press the control key to release my mouse. And I go over to my client machine right here. I can click on settings and under storage, I have this disk that's in the drive. I can uncheck the live DVD and also click on this button right here and remove disk from virtual drive. At that point, it does not have the disk in there and so it's gonna be running off of its own operating system that has been installed. So I can go back to this virtual machine and I can press enter and it can then try booting up onto this newly installed version of Ubuntu 24.04. So here we have it booting up. All right, so now it boots up into the desktop and you can see it's got this Ubuntu thing right here. Uh, I can go ahead and press next. It asks me if I want to enable my Ubuntu Pro and I do skip for now. I don't need to pay extra money and I don't really need to share any data. I can go ahead and click next and finish. At this point, you can go ahead and make changes. So let me introduce you basically to the system. In the upper right hand corner, you have options. You can do things like shut down the system um, and change graphic settings. So power button right here. Um, this right here is your settings. So I'll click on settings. One setting I like to change under dis um, not display, but power is the uh, blank screen. I change it to never because I like it to stay on while I'm in it. Um, a related one is down under power options. Let's see. Privacy and security, I guess. You have your screen lock and I just turn off the screen lock. I don't need it to lock. Um, you can go ahead and do other things, change your display resolution and stuff like that. Um, and then go close it when you're done. Um, also, on the lower left-hand corner, you can see your list of apps. So I can click here. I like to have this terminal uh, appear on the left-hand side of the navigation. So I right-click it, and I pin to dash. You can see it pops up. 
I can click here to shrink that down. I can click on this terminal, pop it up. Then if I want to type things into the terminal, I can type whatever I want. And then when I'm done, I can type an exit to close the terminal. Uh, if you want to go to the App Center, you can do this little, it's kind of like a store thing where you can in the explore and find things to install. Um, but then it's up and going. And I can go ahead and let's do an update just so you can see how it's done. So I have the terminal here. I'll do a, a sudo su dash. This is my favorite way of getting into root. Basically, you use your own password to get into the root account. Assuming you're part of the group that can get in there. And then I do an apt update first. This kind of checks to see which updates are available. And then I can do an apt upgrade, which actually installs the updates that are available. Um, and you could, before you install them, look and see which ones are going to be installed. Um, I didn't bother to do that because it wasn't extremely important to me at this point. But then you can just do your updates, um, get ready, get installed. And um, once you're done, you just exit out of this terminal and uh, and we're good to go so it's about done there we go exit out of my sudo su and then exit out of the terminal and we go ahead and click on this thing and the power button and then i'll just power off my system so that is how you install Ubuntu Desktop 2404.